all right welcome to another episode of making bad levels if you guys came here from the last level we made i made a level that took literally 19 hours to beat and today we have a level inspired by a pretty common level you'd see in endless expert and that is your classic pick a door level so to make it even worse i decided to make a pick a door level that is entirely luck based now pick a path actually got pretty popular in mario maker 2 for the fact that you actually can't view other people's levels in the game itself so if i go to course bot and i have a few downloaded courses already but if you can see there's no option to view you can either play or play together no option when you go to my courses there's a make option which obviously lets me see the course that i've made so that's why pick a paths are a lot more prevalent in mario maker 2. In Mario Maker 1, you could view other people's levels. And that's the whole reason for the homie movement. So when people get pick a paths, they'll know exactly where to go. Which is why I leave the homie comments. But there are ways around that, such as this website right here. Which lets you type in any level code and it will display the level as if you were viewing it in the game. I'll put a link to the website in the description for those that are curious. But first, I want to explain the inspiration behind this level. Like, why did I even make it? And the reason is because... Picket doors, they have one flaw or one like pro, whichever way you want to look at it. And that is that the answer to a pick a path, pick a door, pick a pipe, pick a whatever, the answer will always be the same. So for example, we have a level here with four doors, three of them are incorrect, one of them takes you to the goal. And we pick randomly. So you know door number one or the left door is incorrect. And just by going through this image, you can see door two is correct and it is the right answer. Door 2 takes you to the goal. Door 2 will always take you to the goal, no matter how many times you play this level. That answer will not change. And for lengthier pick a door levels, or pick a path levels, you can view the course in the level viewer so you'll know exactly where to go. So, for example, let's just go to some random pick a path level that I got, an endless expert or something. Right, for example, let's just take a look at this little Timmy pick a path level I got a long time ago. You'll notice that with the viewer, you can see where to go and what the right choices are. And those choices will always be the same. So you'll always go to the middle here. You'll always take the first door. You'll always take the top path and etc. until you reach the goal. So the reason why this level exists is because even if you can clearly see the layout of the level, it will not actually help you beat the level. And that is because I made the choices completely luck-based and based off of our randomization. Well, luck to an extent, and we'll get into that. So for example, if you aren't me and you want to view this level in any way possible, you can just go to the website, type in the level code, which we'll demonstrate right now. So as you can see with the website, you can pretty much see what I was seeing in the editor. All the block layouts, what's in each block. You can view hidden blocks, which is why pick a paths aren't the worst in the world. And that's when I thought to myself, how can I make a level where even if you can view it in a level viewer, will not help you in any way to beat the level? And that's why this level exists. So let's walk through how this level works. All right. First things first, you're going to start off. And you're not going to die. Can you believe it? That's the first amazing thing. You start off the level and you don't die. But basically, you're going to go through this entire, what I like to call the playground. See, look, look at all these uh, spikes, spring, or look at all these springboards, claws, bumpers, you know, just having a good time, just vibing. And yeah, you're just gonna keep going until you see this door, and then you enter the door. That's, that's all you do. Pretty straightforward level so far. And now, after some time, you are presented with two doors. It is a 50-50 on what door kills you and what door does not. So for the sake of this example, I don't know what I'm gonna pick. I'm just gonna pick left, because I'm a lefty. And, to our surprise, we die. Now, let's say for example, we do pick correctly. So I'm just gonna move this, and I'm just gonna block the door. So for example, pick left door, say you pick correctly. So instead of dying to the saw, you spawn back in the main area, and you are taken to a door here, and you can see there's no other option. You can only go back. So this door takes you to the very beginning of the level. And guess what? You get to do everything again. And in short, you are basically supposed to pick between two doors correctly a total of seven times. And that is fundamentally how this level works. Now, before we can talk about the level in depth, 
we're going to talk a little bit about randomization in this game. We're going to give a pretty, pretty high level explanation, so nothing too complicated. But basically, randomization is based entirely off of player movement. What that means is if the player does the exact same thing in a level every single time, you can determine what randomization you have. So for example, things like blocks and magic goopas hit, or when a hammer bro throws a hammer, those will be the same every time. So for example, if I play from start, you can see that I will always get a mushroom from this magic goopa, no matter what. Look, hammer bro always throw a hammer, like right then, and it will always be the same because I'm doing the exact same thing, which is not moving. Now the moment I change up my movement you can see i got a coin that time let's try again let me, let me go left now i got a goomba let's try one more time let me just do something like a jump i got a spiny so you can see just very small movements in itself will drastically change the outcome of what block gets spawned from here so now that we know that player movement affects the randomization and it's important to note that entering a door actually does not reset the randomization. So for example, if we re-enter the store, or we, we enter the store, I got a coin. We'll see what I get this time. A Goomba. How about now? A Koopa. How about now? A Buzzy Beetle. So you can see that I'm gonna get a different item each time. And now that you know the basic principle about how randomization works in this game, we can finally talk about the level itself. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail about the technical aspect of this, but basically the way this works is the purpose of the playground is to make the player do different movements each time or different enough movements. Like if you're, if you're a perfect person and you can replicate this entire section perfectly each and every time, the same time every single time, then theoretically, you are able to manipulate your luck so you know which door to pick. But in reality, a human is not going to be able to replicate their movements exactly. So, by the time you get into this door, you don't know what this, which door you're going to have to pick. So at this point, it's, it's pretty much just luck on which door you pick. Because in traditional pickup path levels, if you had to pick between four doors, they're always going to be the same door, right? Like if the purse, the creator always pick, makes you pick the first door, it'll always be the first door. But how do you randomly determine which of these doors is the right answer? And that is with this mechanism up here, the clown car randomizer. So when a clown car hits a spike, it will move either left or right randomly. So the very top one right here, where the on-off is, will determine whether the on-off gets set or doesn't. So, for example, let me just place myself in different areas. So, for example, that one, the on-off got triggered, that one didn't. That time it did. That's just a very, very simple explanation. Obviously, there's more to it, like this mechanism right here. Playground, which kind of influences that. So, when the on-off is on or off, that'll cause... It will cause one of these launchers to not spawn. Which means when you exit the door, you'll get killed from the saw, as you saw from the first example. So in this case, if the switch is on, you can see this bullet launcher would cover the door, and the player is able to proceed back in the level without dying. Likewise, if it was off, this launcher would not spawn, which we can demonstrate more quickly by putting an on-off here. So if it's off, then you pick the left door, and you survive. So technically, these doors will always have the on-off swapped, or the on-off state associated with them. So, for example, when it's off, you should always pick the left door, and when it's on... So if it's on, you should always pick the right door. So technically, that doesn't change. What changes is whether the on-off state will be on or off by the time you get here. Which is what this clown car randomizer is here. So the purpose of this playground area is to cause the player to move in various different ways differently each time because it's very hard for a player to do the exact same movements every single time when they get to this area even one small jump could change the outcome of the on off swap this uh, on off state from this point which is why when they get to this area they have no clue if it's on or off which brings me to a potential flaw so when an on off switch gets swapped 
Notice how there's a very loud sound. Alright. So that would be one way to tell that the on-off state has been swapped. The other tell is when an on-off switch gets swapped, the controller, this controller that I'm holding right here, it will actually vibrate. And this holds true if the on-off switch is completely off screen. So if you can hear the on-offs getting swapped or feel it, literally feel it get swapped, then it will defeat the whole purpose. You'll know which door to go. So the way to mask that is with this guy right here. So additionally, when blocks get blown up, so you're going to see, right, this this clown car will always blow up this block because it's walled off here. Anytime a block gets blown up, the controller vibrates. So by forcing this block to blow up every single time at exactly the same time as the on off, that's why they're positioned on the same X position, it is impossible for the player to deduce the on off getting swapped by a controller vibration. Because since it'll always vibrate, you no longer get that cue. But that still leaves the sound getting hit, as you can see. On off, the on off sound is very audible. But thankfully, with a very specific sound effect, Whatever this is, the TV thing, this one right here. By placing it over this door, whenever they exit the door, it'll play that sound effect and listen closely. The on-off switch sound getting swamped is completely masked. So therefore, an audio cue no longer exists to determine if the on-off is on or off. This was actually one of the biggest issues I had because if you guys have seen the Steve Gaming video, uh, video where he also tried to make really bad levels, he actually had this idea in his Lolo, but he left out the fact that on-offs leave a sound and the controller vibrates in his video. So when I actually went to replicate his setup, I noticed that and I was like, this is a problem. But thankfully this setup pretty much solves the issue. A player should not be able to reasonably deduce the on-off state based on the setup. And then finally, there's a bottom clown car here. There's no particular reason, it's, it's just there because maybe you can deduce like, or you can like <laughs> use directional audio. I don't even know if that exists in this game, but if it does, uh, the, the bottom clown car just to make this sound to kind of throw off the player as well. Basically, you know, trying to eliminate sound cues as well. And that's basically how these doors are randomized. That's also why this is here, just to force the player to not be able to need, be in this area to kind of hear anything. But yeah, that's basically how the take a door mechanism works. Now the only thing left was to force the player to do this as many times as I want them to. All right, so if I got rid of this door and I got rid of this block, you have to you just pick correctly once, right? And you win. So how do I actually force the player to pick multiple times? That's with this little mechanism here. Very similar to the mechanism I use in my 19 hour level. But basically how this works is each time this area gets loaded, whether it be the player coming from here to this area or they re-enter the door and go down here basically when they pick correctly it'll cause a chain reaction of these blocks getting blown one by one one by one until it eventually reaches this block so the way it's laid out right now you have to pick correctly seven times you can ignore the goombas those are irrelevant at the moment but basically right now this layout has it so the player has to guess correctly seven times so you can change this to your liking so for example if i want them to guess like one time correctly it would, it would be like this but i picked seven because the goal isn't to make it impossible to complete Right. If I want to be truly impossible or like a really low probability, I'll just flood this entire area with, with as many ball bombs as I can before I run out of sprites. Which I think was like 50. So basically flipping a coin 50 times in a row and guessing correctly, you know, get the idea. But I, I picked 7 because 7 is about a, a good number to kill any super expert no skips runs. So basically it'll take you more than 30 tries in the long run to do this level correctly. So that's why I picked 7. I'm not entirely evil, but yeah, so let me demonstrate that real quickly by just having, uh, you know, these doors here. So you can see bob bombs blow up, and as I keep doing this, the chain reaction will continue, and eventually you'll see the blocks on the right, they are going down the line. So that's how this mechanism works. So by repeatedly entering this area, whether from this side or re-entering doors, It'll cause this 
to slowly work its way down here. Now the Goombas are basically a quality of life. The Goombas just represent how many times you actually have to pick. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Goombas. That's just to keep track, not needed at all to beat the level, but I figured why not just be nice or something. It was the same thing with my 19 hour level. It's just, it's just a nice way to keep track. But yeah, that's basically how this level works in a nutshell. So yeah, the TLDR explanation, you, just, you play level, you go through this area, you move in different ways, enter the door. This clown car will either hit the on off or not randomly. And then you basically just pick a door here. And if you pick correctly, the bullet launcher, whichever door you picked, will block you from exiting and you go back to the level. And then if you pick incorrectly, the launcher will not be here and you exit the door and die immediately. And then once you re-enter the room, you fall down and then you enter this door, which I took away, which takes you back to the beginning of the level. And you repeat the process seven times until you open up the way to the goal and you win. There you go. Also, the on-off state does not reset when you go back to the beginning because I figure there's no real reason to. And there you go. We have successfully made pick a door worse by making it look. But I will spoil something. And that is that this level has already been cleared, actually. So you can see here, it has two clears. And as of this recording, it was uploaded less than two hours ago. Again, the goal for this series is just to take an, a, an already bad idea and make it worse in a creative way. So this level is to make long levels as long as you possibly can. This one is to make pick a door levels actually take luck. The biggest flaw with pick a doors, or rather, I guess the biggest pro, is that you will always know the answer. Right, you can load up the level viewer and you could be like, hey, this is the pipe that you're supposed to take. And I actually have a quick demonstration here. So for example, right, if someone played this level and they made this level, right? You're just going through your way being like, hey, wow, look at this pick a pipe level that I have. All right, let's pick this one. No, it's incorrect. Well, you can just load it up. And then you'll see, oh, this one right here is actually the correct pipe. That's the biggest flaw of pick a paths. Pick a paths. You will always know the right answer. The answer will never change. But with this level, you you can look at it all you want in the level viewer. That's not going to even help you beat the level. Because even knowing the answer, right, you know which door is associated with on off, based on how the level is laid out. That's not going to help you beat the level. And that was the ultimate goal for this. Like if I was truly evil, I would I would make you have to guess more than seven times. But then I'd also have to do it myself, and I have no time for that, unfortunately. And no, I didn't end with a pixel perfect jump. Because I don't I, I felt there was no need. The reason why I put one in the 19 hour level is because you literally don't have to sit in front of a computer screen to beat that level. You can just walk away and then come back 19 hours later. I needed to put some sort of uh something's gotta be like on the line. Otherwise, it'd just be a free level each time, right? And it wouldn't be super expert. But for this one, you, you basically have to be involved. And you have to play the level each time. And that in, in itself is, I think, probably enough for the player. So I guess I truly am not that evil. Despite me wanting to make really bad levels. Let's just guess. Um, also, that sound effect, it, do it does change sometimes, and thankfully that sound effect changing doesn't really affect, it's not associated with an on-off state. So I'm just gonna, I don't know, let's pick, let's pick left, am I right? <laughs> no, I've not picked correctly once. But yeah, this, this effect right here, you can see it changes a little each time. See, it's different than this. It's different than this. And I'm pretty sure this is also RNG. And it's not associated with an on-off state. If it is, then... Well, this level is no longer super expert. That's the other thing. If I have to make a change to this level at all, then I have to redo the clear check, which means I have to beat this again. And that's going to be an entire nightmare. I will have a video in the description below for the clear check, for those that are curious. I did reach six in a row once. So you have, to, you have to guess correctly seven times. I guessed six and then died on seventh, and it was very tragic. But thankfully, when I got back to there, I was able to successfully beat the level. Only took about 40 minutes. It didn't take too long, which I think is pretty respectable for a, a, a good amount of time to defeat super expert runs. And there you go. That's this level. Very happy how it turned out. And I kind of am excited to see what the next one would be. 
uh, hashtag skip this is going to be turning into a series. I apologize if the video layout is different than the previous one. I'm just currently kind of busy with some stuff and this video right here actually ironically also took 19 hours to make. It took 19 hours to be it and it took 19 hours to make the video. So I just want to get something quick out here. Otherwise this level is just going to sit in the bottom of my like core spot because I've just been kind of demotivated. But hopefully it, it does give you an idea of what went through my brain. It was maybe a little more personal, you know, get the face cam going. And yeah, I'm excited to see what next horribly bad idea will come into my brain. Feel free to leave a comment if you if you want to see something with this series, like any other bad ideas that want to be expanded on, and we'll make it happen. If you watched this far, thank you so much for watching. Again, sorry for the informal kind of video. It's not as in-depth, but I can give you one, one little sneak peek, and that is the reason is because I've been working on Dram World 3. And if you don't know what Dram World 3 is, don't worry about it. If you do know what Dram World 3 is, look forward to that before 2025. That's all I'll say. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys later.